I made this Grim Reaper animation in Blender in less than one day. To start things off, I found this model from Sketchpad. I really like its design materials and especially its pose, which is definitely something I can work with. After importing it into Blender, the first thing I did was to look for any overlapping vertices. I can select the entire mesh and press M to merge those overlapping vertices. This removed a lot of vertices making the mesh more optimized for later stages of the process. After that, I enable the face orientation option in overlays. This shows me the directions of mesh normals in red and blue colors. Blue means front facing normals and red means back facing normals. And we want the primary side of our meshes to face forward. For that, I selected all back facing faces and hit shift N to recalculate their normals. This is an important step for any mesh to get the best results especially when you are adding materials to them. Then I separated its cloak, skeleton and hourglass into different meshes. I put a cube as a scale reference to scale down the character. I made him roughly 8 feet. After that, I started creating the rig to animate the character. This pose didn't let me use any authority options, so I had to do it manually. But since I had a good idea of what type of animation I was going to make and it wasn't anything drastically big, I kept this very simple. In the left hand, I just put a bone to control the entire hand, while the right one got a few more bones to do a few more things. Adjusted their role to follow the pose as well. After that, I selected the character and parented it into the rig with automatic weights, which bound the mesh to the bones. And of course, I did not expect it to do a good job, but I got a weight paint job that I can improve upon. So, I checked the influence of each bone of the mesh and started adjusting them manually. Mainly, I removed unnecessary parts from the weights. Added the parts that should move with the bone and use the weight blur tool to smooth the edges. Basically, I had to do the weight paint job manually for the majority of the bones, but since I didn't need to be very precise with it, I was able to finish it in a few minutes. Once that was done, the character was responding to the pose really well. After that, I selected the hourglass and parented it to the rig using child of constraint. As for the weapon, I parented it to the left hand in the same manner. This way, when the hand moves, the side moves with it. These bone shapes were too big for me, so I changed their viewport shape to sticks. Then it was time to make the basic scene setup. I added a plane and scaled it up to be the ground. Added some subdivision and sculpted the bit to add small valleys to the ground. I was hoping to have some piles of skulls in the scene, so until I came to that stage, I decided to add a cube and shape it like this. Duplicate it around the scene to get a slight idea of those piles. A human meta rig is always a good option to get an idea of the scale of the scene. After that, I placed my first camera and started creating the primary movement of our Grim Reaper. I made him come floating towards the center of the scene. While that happening, I place my second camera to take a close-up of the hourglass. To move the camera with the character and keep the hourglass in view, I parented the camera to the rig with a child of constraint, and a third camera to take a close-up of the weapon from the back. To create a multi-camera setup in Blender, I just had to bind the camera to the timeline. I selected the camera and hit Ctrl B on the timeline. Then a third camera to get a wide view of the character floating forward. Using the rig we created, I made a subtle changes to the starting pose of the Reaper and started animating. In the final few frames, I made the character blend back to its initial pose. Usually, I like to create a final pose and then take those keyframes of the bones and offset them a bit 
to change each board's timing. And at the end, I added another camera for a close-up of the character. Once I got the basic animation done, I started tweaking those keys. I adjusted the timing of the pose, camera cuts and angles. The best way to improve on this animation was to add a bit of more wiggle and shape to their bones. So I selected a few bones and added a noise modifier to their rotations. This gave those bones some wiggle, making the animation less static. In the graph editor, you can select the channel you want to add wiggle and then add a noise modifier and adjust its parameters. I added some wiggle to the other class as well. After that, it was time to add some dynamics to the clock as well. I picked everything I wanted to add clock simulation and their collision objects and put them into a collection and make them pair to an empty that is located in the center of the scene. Then I duplicated that collection and scaled everything inside about 10 times using that empty. Added a cloth simulation to this object. The increased scale of the meshes made the distance between vertices 10 times higher making the cloth interaction easy to calculate. I created another vertex group and selected the areas I didn't want to simulate. For this, I picked the top half of the cloth. I used the gradient tool to make a smooth follow. Then, use that vertex group as the pin group for the cloth sim. I enabled collisions as well. After that, it was tweaking the values and settings of the cloth sim. I added a wind force field and a turbulence field to add more dynamics to the cloth scene. And after all that, I baked the scene. Did a similar thing for the other measures that I wanted to simulate. To add this baked data to our original collection, I created a simple geo setup to get that position data of the 10 times bigger collection. Scale them down 10 times and apply that to the original measures. To improve on this cloth seam, I created another geo setup that adds a moving wave motion to these measures. This way, I was able to add subtle movement to the cloth pieces on top of that cloth seam. I did a viewport render to see how the scene turned out so far. Then, I started polishing the animation. I added a spotlight and placed it behind the subject. This will be our primary light. Then, I got these two skull models from Blender Asset Bundle. A low poly one to populate most of the files and then a high poly mesh to put close to the camera. I duplicated the skulls a few more times and simulated rigid body physics. After that, I applied their final transformation data to those objects. Then, for creating a file, I manually placed the objects like this. Put both those files into separate collections and use them as collection instances to populate the scene quickly. Well, since our ground plane wasn't flat, I had to redo the rigid body physics for the spread out skulls. Duplicated the piles a few more times around the scene. And for the close-up of the skulls, I used that high poly skull mesh. This Grim Reaper model came with a decent material but I wanted to add a bit more touch to it. I added an ambient occlusion, sheen and also duplicated the material few more times to use for separate objects. I quickly modeled this for the inside of the hourglass and added an MSU material to it. Also added some translucency to the cloak. This way it will nicely illuminate when the lights hit the cloak. Did a similar kind of adjustment to the side material as well. Made the blade metallic. Then I added two UV spheres behind this blindfold and added an emissive shader to them. This way they illuminated the blindfold due to the translucency and gave a nice scary vibe. For the sky, I used a stylized sky image from a free skybox pack. I lowered its strength and made it a bit more red. 
For the skull, I used a noise texture to drive most of the variations in color, roughness and bump. Since I used the object coordinates, it randomized the noise pattern for each duplicated mesh. Added some ambient occlusion as well. Also, I used the random output of the object info node to randomize the color of the skulls. Then, I added a secondary light above our subject's head, made it very subtle just to give a clear idea of the subject's shape. Also, for the ground, I went with a brown mud texture setup and used that texture to add some displacement as well. I added a cube and scaled it up to fit the entire scene, then used a principal volume node to add volumetric fog into the scene. Kept the density around 0.1. Also, to add a bit of variety, I used a noise texture for the density as well. After that, I changed the angle and position of the main light for each camera shot to get the best lighting direction. Also, in certain places, I added a few more secondary lights with low intensities to show a bit more shape and detail of the scene. I didn't want those secondary lights to illuminate the fog that much. So, I created a small node setup using the light spark node to control the follow of those lights. For final touches, I added a bit of bigger motion to the side. I added some cubes, scaled them like this and placed them around the seat to look like wooden pieces. Also, when positioning them, I tried to use them as invisible guidelines towards our subject. Added a small bit of wiggle to the camera for some handheld motion. Using Geonauts, I added some particles to the scene and gave them sideways movement. Then made a few small shapes. Added an emissive material and used them as instances for the particles. And that's how I made this Grim Reaper animation in Blender within a few hours. So hit the like button, comment your thoughts below and don't forget to subscribe to HelpX Learn so you don't miss out when the next video drops. Until next time.